The Melvin Price Lock and Dam in East Alton, Illinois, is one of only two in the system with 1,200 foot chambers. Toes can pass through in about 20 minutes without having to be separated in half and then reconnected. Melvin Price has been in operation since 1989. It's much more automated and modern than the smaller locks. It even has an attached wildlife refuge. Upriver, there's an unusual lift gate. Downriver, each of the miter gates weighs just 25 tons less than the Statue of Liberty. It took about 800,000 cubic yards of concrete to build. Um, it's the largest structure on the Mississippi River. It's also one of the busiest on the Mississippi River. We move approximately 62 million tons of uh, commodities through here every year. There are proposals for the Corps to build five more 1,200-foot locks on the upper Mississippi and two on the Illinois. That would cost billions and take years. Meanwhile, the river will wait for no one. The big money flows on day after day, month after month, year after year, carrying silt and sand and debris, constantly trying to find new ways to the Gulf. Keeping that from slowing down American commerce will keep the Corps of Engineers busy for the foreseeable future. They've already been doing it for well over a century. Two hundred years ago, Thomas Jefferson knew what he was doing. When he cut the deal with Napoleon Bonaparte on the Louisiana Purchase, he understood that the Mississippi River was a mover of commerce and, and, and a conduit for commerce to move in and out of this country. At the time of the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, the Mississippi River and what lay west of it was little known or appreciated by most Americans. That soon changed. The steamboat was introduced to the Mississippi Valley in 1811, and from that point on, uh, transportation grew. Uh, the, the steamboat ushered in more settlement to the region. In the 1820s, Congress passed the first Rivers and Harbors Acts and appropriated funds for the Corps of Engineers to begin work on the Mississippi. In the early 1800s, West Point was the only engineering school in the country. And so if you were an engineer in this country and educated in this country, you went to West Point. So you were by default a military engineer. This is a transportation issue, a national level transportation issue. And, and the military engineers going back to, to Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee, as a lieutenant, helped to do the initial survey of the St. Louis Harbor. And through time, the military engineers have always been involved with the significant transportation and navigation issues here. From the 1870s to the 1890s, Corps draftsman Henry Peter Bossy took a series of photographs from St. Paul to St. Louis to document the work. His photographs were rediscovered in the 1990s and are now considered classics of landscape photography and go for tens of thousands of dollars at major art auctions. In the early years, maintenance meant mostly clearing driftwood and debris from the river. At the time, the river was mostly wide and shallow, and the Corps began to try to narrow it and deepen the channel to use the power of moving water to do that wherever possible. The Mississippi floods frequently cut new paths for the main river channel. Revetments, riverbank protection to prevent erosion and cut-throughs, began to be built. By 1900, most of the river control methods still used were coming into place. Levees, weirs, even a few locks and dams. In the 1930s, the current lock and dam system was built, 27 of them from Minnesota to Missouri. Even though paddle wheelers lasted into the 1960s, they had long been antiques. Diesel-powered towboats could push bigger tows more efficiently. The Corps' management of the Mississippi is not without controversy. Critics charge it is trying to do what man shouldn't do, control nature. That is the criticism of the Corps of Engineers, that it does try to control nature. And I would say that that debate has been ongoing since the river improvements first began. The answer to that question is the Corps of Engineers truly does try 
to work with the natural tendencies of the river, to let the river do what it wants to do, but we try to do that in a more controlled manner so that the river's just not out there shifting channels and, and cutting off islands and making towns be on one side of the river when a few years ago it was on the other side of the river. So maintaining that river by using its own natural forces, uh, and that's how most engineering structures are designed. They are designed to work in harmony with the natural laws of the river. Life on the Mississippi has its own pace and style that reflects the slow, inexorable flow of the water. You've got to be dedicated to it because it, uh, it's 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, uh, 52 weeks out of the year. It never stops moving. Uh, so you've got, uh, uh, you've got a unique breed of people that work in, the, in this industry. Either when you come to work in it, you either love it or you need to get out of it because uh, it doesn't shut down. All the commerce means plenty of work. Puts groceries in your belly. <laughs> uh, but for that, there'd be a lot of hungry people, I imagine. I mean, it's quite an operation. To me, it means a good livelihood, and, you know, security for my family. This is, this is it for me. So I, when I think about it, I, I just think about the, uh, the adventure of it and and just the whole experience, it is pretty amazing. So. Timothy Groves, who deployed to Afghanistan with the National Guard, finds echoes of the military life as a bargeman. Most of our work is out there on the barges, and um, I guess the you have six hours on, six hours off for your watch, and that stays pretty steady. You know, you can get pretty, um, pretty into a routine, kind of like with the military. The competition on the river takes place in the corporate office, it doesn't take place out here. We have to work together. And that camaraderie is something that I've never seen before in any industry. The barge crews typically work 28 days on, 28 days off. That promotes lifestyle possibilities many find deeply satisfying. There are other satisfactions. Working on the river is just, uh, it, it's a wonderful, career field for me, uh, being with the Corps. Uh, it's satisfying, it's a quiet, beautiful place, working outdoors and uh, helping people, uh, creating recreation facilities for folks and maintaining that. It's, uh, it's a good feeling working out here. Dredgers take a slightly different view. Well, I really love my job, to tell you the truth, and uh, I like the uh, everything about it, the ship handling, the mud, the camaraderie, uh, the schedule. Uh, it's a pretty good mix. 